This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Yeah, that's right. Hello out there, dear listeners. Hello in here, dear Leons. Hey. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, I'm pretty good, and you? Uh, pretty good. Leon, what did you do, do roughly one year ago? Um, I was sitting at my desk and thought about uh, maybe we should create a podcast for Modicast. Oh, no, podcast no. for Modicast. A podcast for Modic and name it the Modicast. Cool idea, but that must have been more than a year because uh, a year ago we already had done our first episode ever of oh, the already. Modicast. It's been over a year already. Time's flying, eh? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so um, congrats to you. And, <laughs> congrats uh, to you. And thanks to all you listeners out there for uh, the nice uh, feedback we get from you and for being such loyal listeners. Um, yeah, so without any further celebration, um, um, <laughs> by the way, we have a huge cake on the table here. Oh, yeah. Just can't eat it because of the mask in our face. <laughs> 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 no, just kidding. Uh, no, no cake. Um, yeah, this in, uh, this uh, episode is titled N8N. So mm -hmm. we have an interview with Tanay Pant, uh, the, the uh, chief developer of the NH N8N product. We yep. did talk about that project before as a replacement for Zapier mm -hmm. and, and all the others in the field. And I think it's fascinating stuff. It's a good interview. So so hold on a second or or Stay fast tuned. forward if you <laughs> like. It's uh, it's interesting. I think it's uh, worth a thought. Um, the routine thing to begin with is latest software releases, Leon. Yeah. So we have two releases actually, the two sixteen four and the three two one. Um, both are smaller bug fix releases also um, because of some security issues as far as I'm concerned yeah, minor uh, relief yeah yeah and uh, 2.16.4 is maybe going to be the last Mordic 2 version there is a blog post in the forum about that and we will link that in the show notes yeah yeah it's very probably the, the last one except uh, if, if some some serious if security thing should come up during this transition period we'll of course throw out another release <laughs> uh, and that yeah. can can happen every day so never, never forget about that but if not then this is time for bye bye so that's what this post is is titled goodbye mordic 2 it's been good to know you oh it rhymes <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> uh, isn't that cool um so and then we had some tiny little event called the Modicon. It's like a small, very <laughs> efficient event. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The the talks for Modicon are all online now. Every single talk was recorded and is, has now been been published, thanks to to everybody involved with with that yeah. part of extra work and uh, big like, shout out. Like, it was a yeah. A lot of work, I guess. Yeah, the entire Modicon was, but but when Modicon was over and everybody still in the afterglow, and some had to do the <laughs> <laughs> the, the subtitles and, and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm glad we have that, and I think it's so incredibly good material that we have. Oh yeah, with a ton of talks, so and, and, many good talks, yeah, and and a, an incredible quality too. Mm -hmm. So we we did have uh, talks in various languages, like mm -hmm. like. Japanese, if you may, or, or Portuguese, or and German, some German, <laughs> even yeah. Uh, the majority in English, of course, and and the the topics were all over uh, the place domain, <laughs> domain. <world. laughs> um, uh, like like from from marketing approaches to to specific plugins, yeah. to whole variety, high, yeah. high availability and high performance modic to the future of Mordic and all that um, open source contribution panels we we had <laughs> so much and uh, I, I really can't point to any specific highlights before because there were so many of them no. um, the one thing you should make sure to watch is the keynote of course by Ruth mm -hmm. um, which is not only a really nice keynote but also is announcing some things officially that we did talk about before and that I really feel are very important. Frankly, I'm in, lo in love with these <laughs> things. Um, one thing is the Tiger teams, uh, where 
Yeah, shall I? Yeah, 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 just uh, give a quick yeah. overview. <laughs> really, really <laughs> brief, and I hope I get it all right. Uh, the idea is to uh, to approach Mordic development from a different angle, and that is by a very functional perspective. Mm -hmm. So there, Mordic is built of, of a lot of different uh, angle uh, elements. Yeah. Let's say forms or uh, emailing or Focus tracking and yeah. reporting and all that um, and to concentrate as a person on just one or maybe two of those elements and uh, contribute heavily to this certain element uh, makes it really easy to uh, get started yep. because you don't have to know everything you don't, don't have to know all the people you really have a small team to work with and you can really make a dent in the history by making modic tracking the best in the world or, or um, making um, emailing uh, way better or, or to, to to bring all the improvements to the campaigns that, that people are striving for um, yeah and if you pick your spot and uh, no matter if you are a hardcore PHP developer or a UI person or uh, basic, basically a stakeholder, uh, like you have business level ideas for something or would like to contribute or improve documentation or answer questions, everything, uh, the, the Tiger teams are really cross-functional. Mm -hmm. um, and the next step here is to have an overview page of the various ideas and to express your interest to say okay this might be interesting for me or that or that this is non-bindingly of course yep. and uh, to get started that's the best way to see to see who would be interested in doing what and then get started with the first handful of tiger teams and like so many others i haven't made my choice either i i can't wait to be part of a tiger team same but i have so many ideas and um it makes it much easier to start with one but to pick that is the next step uh, for strategic ini initiatives, at the other part that was announced, um, it's uh, a step further already. We we do have six uh, initiatives that got started that that uh, people signed up already for, uh, and uh, Slack channels exist and everything. Oh, but nice. this is the right now the right time now to join an initiative too, if you are into one of those topics. And let me just read the topics to you. Yeah. Uh, with uh, f from very technical uh, or base 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 level or low level topics to all the way to user facing topics, we start let's say from supposer, uh, composer support, mm -hmm. uh, installation and up upgrade process, um, modic marketplace, resource management, the builders like mm -hmm. the email builder for instance is an ex uh, initiative we discussed that with Joey. Yep. Um, and then there's one that's called Mordic Next Generation. The Next Generation uh, initiative is a bit speci uh, is specific because it it is uh, was spawned of a discussion that that uh, was pre-existing, mm -hmm. um, and and I'd like to link to that discussion too because I think it's very important for the future of Mordic, and that's also what the name of this discussion is. Um, in general, those initiatives are not a small feature of Mordic which you uh, care about in the long run or, or over a long period of time. Uh, it is more about a certain milestone, a big leap forward, a, a quantum leap um, that you want to support uh, or and, and make happen by whatever. Again, it's cross-functional. It, it can also in, involve crowdfunding and things like that. And uh, that's more the, the major leaps. And there, there will be more and, and everybody's encouraged to come up with his own initiative or her own initiative. That's why it's called initiatives. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> crazy, eh? Okay, uh, okay. Um, so that's uh, Tiger Teams and strategic initiatives. If you always wanted to get started contributing or, um, or could be part of something in Mordic, that's uh, two fantastic ways to do that now. Yeah. Then also doing Modicon, there was a little format called Lightning Talks. Uh, 
like instead of 30 or 45 minutes of, of deep dive, it's just the five minutes uh, lightning talk, as the name <laughs> says. And for one thing, there's a very, uh, very, very successful and, and, and great lightning talk that has something to do with the Mordecast. So if you haven't seen that, <laughs> that's your chance to see Leon live. Eh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Um, and then there's another one we did about the tech manager. Mm -hmm. uh, the tech manager did not make it into 3.2 because there were some, some code coverage issue, issues with the automated testing, whatever. <laughs> uh, so that's too bad, but, but the tech manager is available as a, a PR, as a pull request, and also as a patch for your existing uh, Mordic installation. So if you want to do it, uh, take a look at the video and uh, install it, and the link is in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about a little bit more of uh, technical add-ons that fell from the sky recently. Yeah, so we have some news. Um, our friend Stanislav Dinyeng, Dinyesko, Dinyesko, Dinyesko. Yeah, okay, <laughs> thank you, from Kiev, um, wrote a Mailgun API plugin for Mordic 3. Um, yeah, Mailgun is a SMTP provider. Yeah, email, email provider like like uh, all the others, and I think that that was really a missing missing feature in Mordic three that m there was no Mailgun API support so far. Now we have it. Yeah, thanks, Stanislav. Thanks, Stanislav. Yeah. Super good link is uh, in the show notes, and but that's not <laughs> all from uh, the side of plugins. So Konstantin Scheumann from um, Berlin actually wrote a, a recapture plugin, so you can uh, add that to forms and have a little capture. So people have to fill that in before they can send in the form. Yeah, I, I would guess everybody is familiar with with the uh, spam issues yeah. with every form out there in the internet. There are different approaches. We normally don't do captures or recaptures, but it's very popular. Mm -hmm. So in the past, there were those things like like please type the letters that you see in this picture, oh, yeah. or <laughs> then there, there was a. Please um, click on every bicycle that you see in these images, and then the more advanced versions of Google Recapture were like like you don't really have to do anything except check a tag box, mm -hmm. and the rest is AI. Um, there are different approaches. Like we don't want to do, or we we prefer to do honeypot fields, like we have uh, hidden fields so that users don't see but bots typically do and they're mm -hmm. stupid enough to to fill in that form yep. um and then we say okay throw this away uh yeah different approaches but if you want to do a capture or a recapture really really now you finally have the chance thanks constantine thumbs up oh by the way uh i, I have no idea how this came to happen i i know he is in in germany but i have no no background on this so if you hear this constantine Get in touch, I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a fun little blog post um, side project from our friend Joey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, looks like he was super bored. And uh, what he did was he installed Mordic on a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> why not, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> because he can. <laughs> yeah. And of course, he did a blog post on it, and it's a fun thing. So t t check it out. Yeah. And and much much more. There's a lot of things going on, but but uh, we save things for the next episodes. One thing, one tiny thing that we released ourselves was uh, the Mordic three support for auth zero yeah. single sign on. Finally, a pretty convenient thing if if you are using auth zero. Oh uh, yeah, let's let's skip everything else for now and, and move it to later episodes and move on to our interview. Yeah. Again, this is about. Uh, N8N, we did touch on it in, in I think, one or two Mordecast episodes, two even. <laughs> uh, and and uh, workflow automation or connecting other apps to Mordic has been uh, a thing that, that shows up again and again. Yeah. Uh, this thing is especially interesting, I think. So we did a full interview, and I think it's, it's worth listening. So let's go. Okay, welcome, Tene. I'm very glad to, to um, welcome you here on the show today. Thanks for your time. Um, Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Um, uh, we've been discussing, or we've been touching on this topic of work workflow automation time and again in this podcast. 
um, sometimes with Zapier, sometimes with uh, Integromat, and we, we even mentioned uh, the product that you are all about, that's NA10, um, because it's a big deal to mar marketing automation. We do have the native integrations, but uh, not not so many. So the, wor the world of um, workflow automation basically opens up uh, a, a ton of other applications to integra integrate with. So I think it's, it's really important for us. And so it's really very interesting to learn more about your product. Before we do that, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, where you're coming from, from and what you're doing today? Sure. Um, so I'm Tane, and I'm the head of developer relations at NA10. And I've been working on several exciting things recently, like helping our community automate a lot of really cool stuff and helping them unleash their productivity. I've been involved in the world of open source and DevRel for almost six years now. And before this, I was involved with the Mozilla Foundation on several tracks. And I've also published books on some of my favorite topics like Firefox OS, WebVR, and virtual assistants on Raspberry Pi. Ooh, so cool. since I have a background in computer science, um, I'm familiar with programming and software development. So a while back, I learned about this thing called the Lego programming language. Have yeah. you heard of it? Yeah, I, I, actually, yes. Love it. I it's love awesome. the concept. I never touched it, but, but I... Uh... It's really cool to hear, yeah. So uh, for those of you listening who aren't familiar with it, uh, they use it in their Mindstorms products. And... Um, those robots from Lego can be made to move in certain patterns by connecting these pre-programmed blocks of movements. So when I saw that first, I recognized the value that it provides in reducing the effort of doing things by abstracting the complexity of making a robot move physically. And then last year, I came across NA10 and like something clicked in the back of my head. Like I could see the genius of having a node-based system with nodes for concepts like conditional logic along with products and services like Motic to automate things. And this for me was like finding Lego for the real world. <laughs> That's funny. I'll add the Lego link to, to the show notes for those who are interested. It's, it's fascina fascinating stuff. I don't know whether it's still around. I think it is. I, I, I know they released a new version of the Mindstorms product yeah. like a few weeks ago. Oh, okay, um, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hope it's still around. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and um, you, where are you located? Uh, I'm located in Berlin. Okay, cool. So, but, but we can't speak German, would we? <laughs> um, no, I no, for the sake of the podcast, that's not. <laughs> because, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so you're with N8 and now you have been for a while. Um, let's start with the idea of N8 N. We, we already, or I, I already mentioned it. it's a workflow automator and there are others around. Why in the world would you start a new one? So, well, the question I think is why not? So historically, a competitive ecosystem has always led to innovation. And like if you look back into the world of search engines and social media networks, for instance, like there was no clear leader until Google or Facebook arrived. And we can draw similar observations from the realm of aut workflow automation. And most of the tools in this space at the moment are sort of okay-ish and there's no clear leader. Well, Zapier is kind of a leader, but mostly only for basic stuff. And it belongs to a previous generation of workflow automation tools. Mm -hmm. And if I were to name the three key differentiators between N810 and the other products in the workflow automation space, I'd say open, extendable, and powerful. But let's briefly chat about like what each of these mean and like why you should care about these when choosing a workflow automation tool. Yeah, please. So when we talk about a product being open and any and specifically being open, it means that you can run any and locally in your intranet or the cloud. So you can decide who gets access and where your data is stored. So this we see elevates a lot of data compliance and GDPR concerns. Oh yeah. And um, another a few things are like with the fair code software model that NA10 has, you're free to download NA10's source code, self-host with just a few commercial restrictions. You can even download the workflows that you build on NA10 Cloud and self-host that at any time if you want. And the source code is publicly available on GitHub. Okay. So this is a bit about open. Now chatting about extendable. So it is 
easy to augment with custom functions, logic, and apps with minimal engineering effort. So we do have a lot of third-party apps like Motic, uh, Active Campaign, Affinity, and so on. But let's say there's a product that you like and there isn't a node for that yet. So you can always use something called the HTTP request node to call their uh, HTTP API, REST API, and get data from them. Yep. Um, so that's something that uh, allows you to even uh, work on things that aren't necessarily a part of any end yet. And uh, yes, yeah, so internally we call it the HTTP request node, the Swiss Army knife in any end. And um, other than that, you can also create custom node integrations. Uh, we have well-documented integration guides and examples, and the references that we create in NADN are freely available. We have a dedicated developer relations team and an engaged user community to help answer any questions that one might have while working with NADN. And finally, um, Talk, uh, talking about how N8N -N is powerful. So N8N's node base editor lets you map anything to everything. And there's a lot of third-party integrations for popular apps. You can design your workflows with unlimited numbers of nodes and mappings. And you can lo use logic nodes like if and switch to add conditional logic to your workflow as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's step a little bit back in time and, and um, let's talk about who came up with the idea for N8N and also particularly, um, what does it stand for? Why N8N? <laughs> cool, yeah. So the project was uh, started by our founder and CEO, Jan Oberhauser. So he started N8N as a side project while he uh, still had another startup and had a part-time job as well. Mm -hmm. So... And like, it's it's funny that you ask because we get that question quite often, and like that's one of the reasons we even added that to the README repository on GitHub. So, so our founder Jan, while looking for a name for the project with a free domain, very quickly realized like all the good ones that he could think of were already taken. Mm -hmm. So in the end, he chose Node Mission. So Node in the sense that it uses Node View, but also because it uses Node.js, mm. and Mission for automation, which yeah. is what the project is supposed to help with. However, he did not like how long the name was and could not imagine everybody typing something that long in the terminal, So, which is why we ended up with N8N. Mm. And I think the, the official way to pronounce it is now N8N, but it was Node Mation not too long ago, is that right? That's correct. Like we, uh, I actually made the change in our documentation and the repositories because we were like, okay, N8N is quicker to uh, speak as well. And I think it was confusing for a lot of people. Should I call oh. it N8N? Should we call it Node Mission? So we just made it explicit, as like pronounced N8N. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was always confusing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, um, Jan did that when? I mean, did start the whole thing? Um... So I think um, he's like he was working on and off on the project, like um, like it was a part time project. So I'd say like around two years back, mm -hmm. but I'm not exactly sure. Okay, no, um, that, that, that's uh, the ballpark, good enough. Uh, and so it it got started as as an idea, and then a part time occupation or part-time activity of his and, and then eventually he, he got more people on board is it fair description that's just my yeah. imagination <laughs> yeah no it makes sense because uh, then like he added the project on github and uh, he did the product hunt launch last year which like attracted a lot of people towards anything as well mm. um, on product hunt on hacker news and so on so yeah that's okay. an accurate description <laughs> now you are already you already mentioned this term fair code which i in my understanding you folks came up with or are part of um so tell us about the, the concept of fair code and, and in conjunction with the business model of n8n what, what do you plan to live from what, what, what are you making money of how open is this thing in terms of um um, other people being involved in, in the core development in, in the strategy and so on. So um, help us understand that. Sure. <clears throat> so I think like the idea of fair code has sort of been around, even if like 
a lot of companies don't use the term exactly, but let me talk a bit about fair code and what it is. So fair code describes a software model where software is generally free to use and can be distributed by anybody. It has a source code openly available, uh, can be extended by anybody in public and private communities, but most importantly is commercially restricted by its authors. So let's chat a bit about what sort of advantages a fair code ecosystem can have for different groups of people. So for project, uh, project managers who choose fair code, it increases the chance of making the project financially viable in the long run. But even OSI approved open source projects win because fair code projects are generally better financed than their open source siblings. And this allows the fair code projects to help them financially, just like we do at NA10. And after all, it is in the interest of fair code projects as well that its dependencies are properly maintained. And other than that, fair code also has advantage for its users. They all can use the project totally for free, exactly like any other open source project. And additionally, they know that the company or person behind it is financially healthy, meaning it will probably not only just stay around for a long time, but also that they can hire people who fix bugs, create new features, create documentation, and answer questions in the community forum. And um, we chatted about, um, I guess, like the nature of the product. So NATN is a community-backed product, and like we greatly value transparency and collaboration when interacting with our community. So I mentioned earlier, like I was part of the open source ecosystem for a long time before NATN as well, and uh, being a part of many communities, one of the things that I greatly value is transparency. So when I'm volunteering, I appreciate knowing about what things are going on from multiple standpoints, like the company's mission, the vision, the product roadmap, plans for community, and so on. And I feel like this leads to a healthy and sustained growth of communities. And uh, similarly, we want to ensure that our community understands where we are going and what our mission is. And that is our job to communicate, because if people join the community for reasons that might not be aligned with our values, uh, they might get unhappy after a while, and we definitely don't want that. Okay, so um, f from looking at, uh, at the at what is visible um, from your con community online, um, it seems that, that there is a, a pretty good activity. People are very much engaged and, and enthusiastic about N8N. Of course, um, this this whole notion of fair code, or, or prior to, to coining the term, um, the business model, um, has been a point of discussion because for everyone who comes from a free and open source perspective, it gets gets a little bit to, to get used to to it or they have questions which were originally mm -hmm. not answered i think they're much better answered now uh, for us as a um coming mostly from a marketing side people are not so uh religious about open source and, and uh, i think it is a very fair business model in my mind and um it, comparing it to other um, flavors like co co completely commercial or com completely open source, free and open source mm -hmm. driven. Um, this looks to me like like an attractive com com uh, alternative. And after all, the result is w what what uh, what counts, and that that not only means a good product, but also the 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 future proofness um, and the, the dynamics in it. And so far, all that looks pretty good. And I think. I, I like it a lot. Um, you did touch on on well comparing to competition. Maybe we should not go too deep into that because um, it, it, what what you said already is a fair description. Um, and we should maybe step back once more and explain to people how how your sort of uh, integration works in general so so when i want to um, glue together application a and application b what does it take you, you talk about about the notion of nodes and, and trigger nodes and so on um so so what, what is the interconnection and what is in between it <laughs> sure um so there are two main node types in na10 so those are trigger nodes and regular nodes Mm -hmm. So the trigger nodes uh, are the nodes that start a workflow and supply the initial data. 
So a workflow can contain multiple trigger nodes, but with each execution, only one of them will execute. And an example of that could be the Motic trigger node, which will start a workflow when, let's say, somebody submits a form in Motic. Mm -hmm. And then we have the regular nodes, which do the actual work in a workflow. I mean, we call them regular node now for the lack of a better term, but I I'd say they're extraordinary nodes. Yep. Um, so they can add, remove, and edit data in the flow, as well as request and send data to external APIs. Yep. So they can do everything possible with Node.js in general. And an example of that would be the Motic node, which can deal with resources like company and contacts within Motic and handle uh, crude or uh, create, read, update, and delete operations. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now you, you stated that it is very easy to create your own things, but, but, um, well, if we, we look at Mordic today, we don't have a trigger node as far as I know. Um, what is a typical process for creating that? What, what is uh, the, the role, the split of roles? What, what would you do? What would I do if I want it? If I'm a developer, if I'm not a developer, what, what is the approach? Uh, so we do have a Motic trigger node, by the way. Oops, um, sorry. <laughs> uh, no worries, no worries at all. Um, so, okay. Um, so there are three main avenues when it comes to how we uh, select nodes uh, to decide which ones to create next. So first of all, we look for requests in the community forum to learn about what kind of nodes or uh, functionalities people would like to have in NATN. Then we think about what kind of nodes would be helpful for us since we use NATN quite heavily for different processes internally and are always looking to automate a lot of our current manual processes. Mm -hmm. And finally, we also look for interesting use cases where NATN can be helpful. So that gives us insights about which nodes to add as well. So once we know about what are the next nodes that we want to build, one of our team members starts working on it. Uh, once the node is ready, somebody outside of the engineering team does a usability review, and we do this to make sure that the new nodes are intuitive, easy to use, and work in a way similar to the nodes in NATN. And after that, the nodes get merged into the NATN repository and get released with the next version. And we usually make a release every week. And uh, in this process, I had been scouting for the new nodes that we should build. So I also support the usability testing for these nodes. And uh, funnily enough, since last week, I have also created five new nodes. And I must say, creating nodes for NATN is quite addictive and fun. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Um, I'm currently looking at the repository of, of nodes that you already have. And I, yeah, well, the, the first commit on the modic trigger node was, was in January. So my God, what, how could I miss that? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, um, once again, if, if I am in a position where I think I would love to have a node, node, um, but don't think I can do it myself is, is, would I, would I approach you? Would I pay you? Would I try to find somebody else or what's, what's a, your, your recommendation here? So you can request new integrations to be added to our forum, which is community.n810.io. It's mm -hmm. a very active forum. Mm -hmm. And there's a special section for that where the users can also upvote if so that we can know which integrations are important and should be created next. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, and so in, in general, do you have, do you have a, any, any data or any gut feeling about the the dynamics of the coverage so how many nodes did did you in total add in the last six months or so do you have any any of that numbers in the last six months so i i don't have exact numbers mm. um but i can give you i think and f I, i probably know this because um i started documenting the different nodes for our documentation mm. and i remember when i started there were around 120 and i joined around six months ago mm. oh. and uh, today there are more than around 200 nodes okay cool the reason i'm asking is that that um for Anybody who's using Mordic and trying to make a decision about the workflow of Mater, um, obvi obviously the, the um, sustainability of that decision is a big deal. 
it's not like it's not interchangeable at all but but if i go this direction or that direction then i want to have a, a solid understanding or trust that uh, this is the right one and and even if a, a an application is not there yet it may be or may very well be in the future it's not only that i can do things for myself we can always do that in open source but that this is a a project that's striving etc and what what you just told us uh, sounds like like that's absolutely the case um so do you happen to know the state of the Mordic integration itself because I, I did talk to other people prior to this interview uh, after all um, those who pointed me to this topic and said hey there's such a lot of things going on why don't you talk about it um, so do, do you know any internals about that what's going on there in terms of improvements or would you say it's perfect already Oh, no, of course. So right now we have resources for uh, company contact as well as contact to company in the Motic node. Mm -hmm. And um, these enable the users to automate things like creating, reading, updating and deleting companies and contacts from Motic mm -hmm. using an N8N workflow. Uh, moreover, it allows you to add or remove a contact for a company. So these are like the current operations or resources that are available in the node. Uh, however, like adding new functionality to an existing integration is, is usually not that complicated. So chances high that we can add new resources or operations if requested quite fast. And uh, the NITM team moves very quickly. <laughs> okay. And uh, since our project is on GitHub, like we have a lot of contributors sending in pull requests for the functionalities that they'd like to see in NITM as well. So the Modic community is also uh, very welcome to jump in and add the features that they'd like to see in NITM's Modic node. It's a whole lot of fun. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, I see. So it's it's when, when I look at the trigger node, it's basically what sort of things can trigger a workflow. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I can think of a lot of things, and when, when I, I have to admit, I, I always go back to things that are, are existing in other um, integrators. Then mm -hmm. um, that gives you a picture, and, and when you think back um, to things that are missing there, there's good good chance for us to get get better here in N eight N than we ever were in, in those others. So mm, cool. Uh, what else is coming next in, in the NITN universe? Is there any any groundbreaking new directions or, or uh, any news? Um, so something that we are actively working on is uh, scalability. So mm. I don't want to say too much, but for sure, very exciting things are coming in the NITN universe. <laughs> okay, but but uh, today the typical. Um, I mean, when you say scalability, that, that refers to, to the infrastructure, to the server, and th that is typically self-hosted today, right? And mm -hmm. um, um, scalability in terms of um, how many workflows can be processed per, per hour or so. Um, do you have any real large inst installations that you can talk about or, or mention by name or, or number? Oh, what 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 size are we looking at when you say scalability? So uh, scalability, like currently in N8, some of the things are scalable. Like if you are getting data from webhooks, like webhooks in N8, for instance, are mm -hmm. scalable. Uh, but when we're talking about scalability here, it's it's also about the infrastructure itself, mm -hmm. um, like how N8 works, so like the core internals of N8. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, like some of the cool use cases, so to speak, that I've seen uh, from the community is like uh, from a company who is using N8N on ships. Um, so they're using it for a lot of checklists and processes there. So that's it's quite interesting. We actually did an interview with them mm. uh, that we have up on our blog, so medium.com slash N8N hyphen IO. Mm -hmm. So we have some cool stories there from the community members who are using N8N in a different variety of ways. Okay. Good, then, then I just point to those in the in the show notes. So that's a good idea. Okay, um, you, you did mention it in the very beginning, uh, but I want to point out to everybody what a big deal it is to have this thing self-hosted, potentially. Um, the, all the GDPR issues that you normally have, 
uh, are magically gone because it's all in your own hands. It's just like with Mordic itself. Uh, <laughs> so you just need to look at the receiving end or uh, sending end, whatever, on the opposite end that may or may not be in other people's hand, but, but it, it is drastic, drastically reducing everything because you're not piping all those uh, personal data through a third party, which I, I love and I think it's, it's, a, it's a, an absolute winner feature, killer feature. That's a very fair point. And I, I remember we briefly talked about like what differentiates NA10 from other products in the workflow automation space. And like other than that, like uh, some of the highlights based on what you said, it's like I had to mention is security, like having the option to browse through the source code helps enterprises and individuals really elevate a lot of their concerns regarding their data. Because in other cases, you're essentially sending your data to a black box where God knows what happens to it. And uh, this is, of course, complemented by the ability to be able to self-host your NA10 instance so that all the data that belongs to you stays with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, big deal, definitely. Um, yeah, and since the source code of the company is on GitHub, uh, people don't need to worry about things like the product going away or the company going bust because if something like that happens, people can still keep using the workflows that they created. And uh, finally, there's the topic of pricing. And I know that with a lot of workflow automation tools, there's a lot of different nodes and operations tend to get extremely costly because with these other tools, they have this thing with per operation pricing that these tools have. And they, this, like, this model hampers creativity, in my opinion, because workflow automation tools exist for a reason. And it's to make our lives easier by not only automating the simplest of our tasks, but also the more complicated ones. And it makes me a bit sad to see like pricing models like this limit people by making automation like point A to point B the norm, which can sometimes hamper productivity. And like you don't have to worry about that with NA10 because we believe in fostering productivity and our product reflects that. So if you're self-hosting NA10, it is free to use. And if you're using NA10 Cloud, the pricing model is per execution of the whole workflow. So let me actually share an example. Um, so like it's, it's interesting because you asked me about like number of nodes six months ago and now. So when I joined, like uh, one of the things that I picked up in the beginning was to document each of the nodes, like show what kind of example workflows they can have, uh, some FAQs and so on, right? And at that time around, there were, I think, 120 or 130 nodes. Mm -hmm. So working on such a large number of nodes to document them and what happens is every week the team releases so many different new nodes. So, you know, if I'm working on documentation, go on a vacation, come back, like it's, it's tough to have a good process to find out like, okay, which nodes have I already documented and which ones need to be documented more to have sort of a good overview. Like that was a bit difficult for me. So what we did was, um, we have a strappy system which uh, we update every time there's a new release mm -hmm. and it contains like the data of all the nodes, like what nodes are in the latest release. Um, and that is actually what populates the n810.io slash integrations page. So we have a GraphQL endpoint for that. So what we did was we built a workflow and uh, this actually runs using a cron job every Monday, so we get information on what's the state of documentation. Mm -hmm. So we get data from the uh, GraphQL API about which nodes exist, and the URL of the documentations are such that uh, there's a correlation between the name of the node and the URL. So using the HTTP request node, we send requests to all the nodes. So in case we get a 404 from the HTTP, HTTP request node, we know, okay, this node has not been documented. So now we run a cron job every uh, Monday, but we also have a slash docs command. So if we do that in Matamos uh, or Slack, that basically gives us mm. like, okay, this percentage of the nodes are documented. These <laughs> are the ones that still need to be worked on. Yeah. And uh, why I bring up this example is like, so HTTP request node, if you just think about that, it's going to send around 200 requests at this day to find out, okay, has this does this page exist yeah. or does this page not exist? Uh -huh. So workflow like this would end up counting as more than 200 executions in other workflow uh -huh. automation tools, and yeah. that's going to cost a lot of money. Got so it. in N810, this N810 cloud, this, costs, uh, this counts as just one execution. Mm -hmm. So with N810, you can truly connect anything to everything.
Yeah. Okay. So let's let's talk about that for a second. Is uh, N8N Cloud is that w the actual business model? Model is that what what you are earning money with? What pays pays your bills? Or, or what what other services or products do you offer to, to clients? So we have two main avenues for when it comes to our business model and how mm -hmm. we monetize. So first of uh, it is what we already talked about is our hosted offering in it in cloud. Mm -hmm. And then there's licensing. So since we are Uh, fair code licensed companies or individuals who want to build on top of N10 mm. or make it a part of their product need to obtain a license from N10 to mm. be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's better for companies this way because that they have to get a special license because they want to integrate it into their paid offering. So mm -hmm. like sure they have to pay at the moment, but when the the money that is made from these licensing deals goes directly back into the project. And this is a project they depend upon a lot. So the money is not actually lost. It helps to make the project better, which in turn also improves their offerings. So like this model in our eyes, uh, with the fair code model, everybody wins. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no need to defend that, but, but um, <laughs> I know that this is probably on many people's mind now, What do you mean integrate in their product? If you, if I think of a Mautic SaaS provider um, who is also um, hosting uh, an N8N instance, maybe themselves, and, and uh, offering the workflow mechanisms to their customers, potentially hundreds, uh, would that be an example of, of uh, integrating in a product and thus being uh, license, licensable? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not quite hundred percent sure about it. Okay, so, um, so ignore the yeah, question. Licensing yeah. is usually a topic that Jan deals with at the moment. Okay, okay, no problems. Yeah. Maybe we, we can follow up with that, and I put it in the show notes too. We can do that. Yeah, yeah or I, I make a post or something about it because I, I do think it's 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 it's, it's interesting for many modic users, but but especially for SaaS providers. Um, it it is uh, definitely an option. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, when when people are new to N8N and are using Mordic already, um, first steps would be to sign up with N8N and uh, play around with it. And any any tips where to start? Yeah, I'd really recommend heading over to docs.n8n.io. Like our team has been really working on making onboarding for new users really easy. Mm -hmm. um, so we have things like quick start guide. We have uh, an, a workflow creating your first workflow. So we guide them step by step uh, how they can get started and create a workflow for themselves. Um, And then, like we also have pages for each doc for each node. So, like what you can do with it, example workflows. So, yeah. Um, once you are in that editor UI, it's a blank canvas waiting for you to design workflows, and the possibilities are endless. <laughs> Lovely. I'm looking at it right now, and that's even that's one more link for the show notes. I think we have, we have a bunch today, and. Um, A, a ton of content. This is so exciting. And uh, I thank you so much for all those insights. Is there anything else you want to add before I let you go? Um, no, nothing that comes to mind. Um, I think we covered a lot. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, I would encourage everybody to try it out and also to bug, maybe not you personally, but but uh, touch base with the, with the NHN community and then make it even better for Mordic. So thanks so much for your time. I appreciate all your work and um, take care, stay safe. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was a great, great thanks, show. Thanks, Take care. Bye. Yeah, quite an interesting yeah, m model of licensing. I've never seen that before in that way. Maybe okay. I'm not too familiar with it, but it's well, pretty new to me. Really invented it himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but it's it's uh, fair enough, really. I mean, I, I understand that they want to find a business model they, they can live live on and pay the bills from, and uh, still, it's it's good for Mordic and uh, for, it's a fair mo fair model, I, I, I believe. Um, the thing we discussed in the 
uh, interview, but but could not really nail down. I, I followed up with with Tanai and asked him about the license thing exactly, mm -hmm. um, and he confirmed to me that this rule that that whoever is re re is reselling N8N or bundling it into a product is obliged to pay license fee mm -hmm. uh, translated to Mordic that applies to Mordic SaaS providers yeah. so if you are hosting your own Mordic or if you ha have a hoster doing that for you then it's free for SaaS providers it is uh, it is uh, licensable yeah. is that a word I don't know <laughs> um, uh, it's certainly still different from from any other um, workflow automators yeah. because True. for one thing it's it's less expensive and the other thing is that it is uh, local it is not handing out handing data to others to third parties to to other countries whatever <laughs> yeah. so if you are in GDPR area CCPA whatever it, that's another point that's interesting for you uh, also if you make your own experiences here or, or already made i'd be curious to learn about it oh yeah sure please uh move on from theoretical uh impressions <laughs> to real life experience and especially to any critical things that may kind of come up or may get solved over time etc and, and just make the modic universe a little bit richer yeah speaking of mm, that speaking, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um it's been uh, handful of weeks now not 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 even um um since modicon is over and we are already discussing modicon 21 <laughs> in fact we already discussed that during the closing keynote mm -hmm. and um this went on and is already uh, shaping oh, wow, okay. in an interesting way and, and the one learning we had with modicon was obviously a an online event is a truly global event. Yep. Uh, we could never have done this in an on-premise scenario. No, never. So do we want to go back? No, we don't. But on the other hand, we do miss the physical meetings, uh, even with uh, people from other countries and talking, uh, experiencing, mm, experiencing people live. Yeah, it's different experience. Live, oh. Drinking some non-alcoholic beverages of live. <laughs> Uh, and maybe more. So, whew, yeah, let me just jump to the thinking we have now. Um, one thing is we do want to keep this global online event. We don't want a, a hybrid uh, event. We do want the full thing as we had in 2020. Mm -hmm. And we want to shift from, from the November slot to a Q2 slot. So sometime before summer, maybe Ooh, yeah. early June, um, would be the new place for the online global Modicon, whatever the name is. The name will probably even change. Uh, but if we say Modicon, we know what we mean. So there will be an online Modicon, as, as far as we know, in early june 2021 that's our best guess today um for the physical thing the idea is to have a physical morticon as a second event in the year oh nice it's some place in the world mm -hmm. uh, for that place in the world so for instance if we start with with a morticon us in 21 or Mordicon Europe, or you name it, mm -hmm. um, then that's for the US. It is, of course, open to the entire world, but but it is not expecting the entire world to attend. Oh, okay. We, we will, of course, also stream things mm -hmm. and uh, or at least record things, etc. Uh, but it is primarily a an on-premise event. So yeah. um, it's a it's two twofold. We have the online event, and we have a per content. Uh, on-premise event we're, we're not going to do uh, many contents per year we're probably you know we we're definitely going to start with only one continent in 21 yeah over That's time we may do more but but if nothing else we will we will do maybe us and you know europe or asia or whatever else mm -hmm. uh one per year maybe more over time time yeah. will tell time will tell yeah, so that's the plan. Um, so f if you feel 
like you have a lot of time to spend <laughs> <laughs> um it's it's going to be more work even but it is of course um a good thing for Mordic. we did we did get so much feedback about Mordicon that it was crazy important for Mordicon. It not only no. huge success and, and good good content, good speakers, as, uh, but it was just for the entire uh, s state of Mordic in a Super very, very good sign and a very good uh, inspiration for everybody. Okay, so it's worth the work, and, and I can't wait to see both things happen in yeah. 21. I'm super excited as well. And now coming from uplifting news to a bit more mellow news, um, the unofficial mod newsletter by Chris Calabro has yeah, sadly been discontinued. Uh, so he stopped uh, yeah, doing it. He stopped the press. <laughs> <laughs> But there are good news because the marketing team invests some energy and time to create an official Mordic newsletter. And in the meantime, we, as the Mordicast, decided to put together our show notes and um, yeah, send them out as a newsletter once or twice a month. Yeah, whenever we publish an episode, <laughs> huh, right? Then you will get the, uh, <coughs> yeah, the new Mordicast newsletter. And yeah, that's pretty much similar lightweight to what Chris did, I guess. We don't know yet when the official newsletter is going to be there and in what form is going to be there. So we thought it's it's good to, to just fill in the gap by the things we have in the Mordecast anyway and, and send it to you if you like. So link in the show notes, right? As always. Uh, well. Oh, surprise. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead, check it out. So I think we're almost done for today it's one more thing i would like to bring up oh and that is a little bit of getting back to the 12 years of mordica <laughs> 12 years of mordica <laughs> not, not <quite. laughs> uh, 12 months of mordicast um we have a really full pipeline of topics oh, ahead yeah. of us and interviews and everything there's just one thing i would like to talk m about more and that is things like case studies success stories mm. uh, real life use etc so if you are a user of Mordic and have something to talk about, um, I'd be really happy to chat with you in a shorter or longer interview as, as whatever you like. Same if you are an agency and as long as your customer agrees with it or they even want to join the conversation, I'd be really happy to, to have that talk. It doesn't have to be crazy fancy. Um, it should be somehow interesting yep. um but but also nobody re really uses every corner of modic or any other marketing automation most people use one thing heavily and the other things more lightly yep. um some have interesting integrations some have interesting use cases like like we currently have a project where modic is used for partner management not for a sales funnel um or support th uh, things, yeah. th onboarding th stuff. Um, so if you have any stories like that, any uh, ways of using it or technical impl implementations or maybe large-scale implementations, etc., oh, I'd be really interested to hear from you. Yeah, and of course, uh, everything else, every, every other sort of feedback as well is always appreciated. Very appreciated. Yeah. Especially if it's uh, comments or hints or criticism of, of sorts. Um, we want to get better. We want to be on a different level in 12 months from now, yeah, just like more it will be. And um, yeah, we appreciate your time and loyalty and uh, we talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.